You're welcome to the fourth topic of our governance module of QIS, effective function of the board. Topic four has nine accountability standards. Standard number 16, the board identifies risks facing the organizational church project and takes steps to manage them. 17, the board has appropriate mechanisms for writing and amending policy. 18, the board monitors and reviews all policies and procedures. 19, the members of the board have sufficient time to devote to the work of the board and each member of the board has clearly defined responsibilities and functions. Standard number 20. Within the board, the following functions are performed by nominated people. There's a person who chairs the board effectively. There's one who takes minutes of meetings and passes on information uh, to the members of the board and the organization. There's a person who accepts responsibility for ensuring financial accountability. And there is a person who takes responsibility for child protection and safeguarding. Number 21. The board meets regularly to ensure that the organization or church project is operating according to its vision, values, and goals. Standard number 22. For every meeting, an agenda is set and accurate minutes are produced of decisions and actions agreed. 23. Members of the board do not serve indefinitely without being re-elected to their position. And 24. Family relationships within the board and staff of the organization or church project are made known. We will now look at each of the nine standards and do two things. Give an example of how they could be evidenced and two, share some reflection questions that we'll be discussing in the webinar when we next meet. Standard number 16, the board identifies risks facing the organization or church project and takes steps to manage them. Do you have a written risk assessment over the last two years? And do you have action points arising from the risk assessments? And three, do you keep a, a risk register? The questions for us to discuss in the webinar are, why is it important to identify risks facing the organization? And can you give an example of a risk you face in your work and how it's being managed? Standard number 17. The board has appropriate mechanisms for writing and amending policy. The evidence we'll be looking out for here is, if they've written policy and procedure, we could also interview the board to find out about the policy of the organization. The questions we shall be discussing are, how does the board work to write and amend the policy of an organization? And how is the management and staff involved in amending of the policies? 18. The board monitors and reviews all policies and procedures. How do we evidence this? There should be a schedule for reviewing organizational policies and minutes of meetings where policies and procedures are discussed. The questions we shall discuss about standard number 18 are, why is it important for the board to review policies and procedures of the organization? Or why is it important to provide evidence of the board decisions of new policies? Standard number 19. The members of the board have sufficient time to devote to the work of the board and each member of the board has clearly defined responsibilities and functions. Evidence is there interviews, we shall interview the board members, but it could also be minutes of meetings of completed actions of the board members. Questions here are, what are some of the examples of functions that must be on a board? Now, how else can board members provide time to effectively execute their function apart from the regular meetings? And finally, for an organization working with children, which function is really important to us and why? Standard number 20 was about the fact that the board has nominated members who serve functions as chair, one who takes minutes, one who is responsible for financial accountability, and one who's responsible for child protection and safeguarding. What is the evidence we shall be looking for here? Minutes that show nomination of chair, secretary, and financial finance official. We find written statements of the roles of and responsibilities of those different functions. We could also interview the board members to check whether they appreciate and understand their roles 
and that they are effectively performing them. Discussion question for us is, what other function could be added on this list? Number 21. The board meets regularly to ensure that the organization or church project is operating according to its vision, values and goals. The evidence here is there should be a schedule of meetings, there should be minutes of meetings, we could also talk to the board members and the management and check whether they are aware of their vision and they are pursuing their values and goals. Our question that relates to Star 21 is, how does the board ensure that the organization is pursuing the stipulated vision and goals and how does it ensure that the values are adhered to? Standard 22. For every meeting, an agenda is set and accurate minutes are produced of decisions and actions agreed. The evidences that we'll be looking for here are schedule of meetings, minutes of meetings, we would have interviews with board members, the director or management team to find out how people are following up the minutes that could have been written. The question we ask here is, what in your view helps to make a board meeting good and effective? Standard 23. Board members do not serve indefinitely without being re-elected to their position. How do we find this out? There should be a written constitution that stipulates this. There could be written policy for board renewal, selection and terms of office, and minutes of meetings recording election results. The question we'll be asking around Standard number 23 is, how does it help to keep renewing the board membership of an organization? Standard number 24, family relationships within the board and staff of the organization or church project are made known. There should be a written record of interest. And we'll be discussing this question. How does it help to declare interests and that they are particularly documented? Thank you very much and we look forward to an eventful discussion in the webinar. Bye.